Welcome to Compassion Speaks, where we give a voice to the nonprofits in the community. I'm your host, Ezra Borrego, and today on our show, we have Steve Bearsley, board chairman for Sholo Mills on Wheels. Welcome, Steve. Thank you very much, Ezra. It's good to have you here. Thank you. So where is your location uh, where you're out of in Sholo? We uh, operate the Sholo Senior Center, okay. which is 301 East McNeil in uh, Sholo. Okay. And that's, uh, what's the uh, landmarks that you can think of? Well, we're behind uh, the Cal Ranch uh, Shopping Center. Okay, basically. that's a big one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just off Central Avenue. All right. And uh, real easy to find us, although we set back off of McNeil a ways. Okay. But, uh, so yeah. tell me a little bit, what is Mills on Wheels? What 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 does Mills on Wheels do in the White Mountains? Mills on Wheels was uh, originated by some very good people in 1984 to provide meals to homebound seniors. Okay. And part of our mission is not only to deliver the meals, but is to um, help to eliminate the isolation that often occurs as one gets into their advanced stages. Right, right. So homebound senior citizens, what qualifies a person to be able to get that besides them not able to get out and go get something to eat? Basically, it's a very simple uh, process. Uh, they have to be above the age of 60. Okay. Um, if they're physically impaired, uh, that's something that we consider. Uh, also, their financial condition. Okay. Because as you might imagine, uh, many seniors are financially stressed. Right. Um, and if they are alone, okay, is is a biggie. Okay. Because um, again, that affects uh, wellness. Uh, tremendously. Yeah. And so you have uh, different volunteers yes. that go out? Yes. And do they have to be qualified in a certain way to drive these mills to these different clients? Yes, they do. Of course, the biggest qualification is a big heart. <laughs> uh, the volunteers um, that's, that's are good. a critical part of what we do. Mm -hmm. And uh, we do require a background check, okay. uh, which is conducted by DPS. Okay. And uh, obviously, uh, driving record is important. Mm -hmm. uh, we supply our own vehicles for the volunteers to to do their job. Wonderful. So, is there any kind of are these cars like do they have decals or anything on them that people can see that they are part of Mills on Wheels when they are out and about? Oh yes. <laughs> one one of them is is uh, very uh, brilliantly wrapped. I'm sure uh, folks have seen it running around town. Okay. Uh, the other one that we just received uh, is in the process of having decals placed on the side. And uh, then we have a van that uh, has placards. And I, if I might mention, get a plug in, one of our huge um, supporters is Horn Subaru. Okay. Who has uh, been kind enough to aid us in, in providing vehicles. That is wonderful. So they probably have a little bit of information on them as advertising that they're a, a supporter of Mills on Wheels. Probably. Absolutely. And that's good. I and mean, that's we've, we've recently been blessed by um, a new private donor. Okay. And that will be revealed here shortly as soon as we uh, get the, the car back. And, and we're so thankful for um, their uh, support. Good. Now, Stephen, how long have you been with Mills on Wheels? Well, as, as I mentioned before, time flies. It's, uh, it's hard. To, I think about four or five years okay. in, in this position. So, how did you fall into this position as chairman? What was? Did you have to get voted in? Did you say I want to do this? What What happened? I, I had been invited to join the board at one time um, because I had been involved with uh, White Mountain Clothe the Child and some other charities. Wonderful. Um, and um, the then present uh, chairman um, made a decision to leave and the board uh, <laughs> voted me uh, to this position. Okay. And you accepted gracefully, didn't you? Uh, absolutely. <laughs> I, I heard the whistle blow. Yeah. That's awesome. You know, there's a lot of, we, our community is a lot of people like you. And it's good to have people like you in their community that are just willing to, to serve those that are in need. Um, 
that is that is what have you what are some of the other things that you've done I know you've probably done some other things that led you up to wanting to do this this just didn't come out of the blue like okay I think I want to serve well uh, it, it's kind of a long uh, <laughs> boring story but uh, I started my work career as a firefighter me too I was a firefighter oh, mm-hmm. terrific yep so you know you you see uh, parts of life that you don't normally see right and um, it, it um, kind of generate and I and I have to thank my folks they I guess instilled in me a, a d- desire to serve wonderful so you were talking about the process for getting the meals to the locations and it's around a two-hour time that you want to do this and what's the purpose of that well we have a two-hour uh, window which is uh, dictated by uh, government regulations okay and th- the original purpose of that is to make sure that when the meal arrives at the client's home that is it is the proper temperature which is 140 degrees. Wow! And uh, for the hot food, obviously, mm-hmm. and um, no more than 40 degrees for the the cold food. So, given the the uh, geography of the area, and you know driving conditions and so on and so forth, this sort of narrows the window that you have available t- right. to get all the meals delivered. Right. So, Sholo area. What is what? What do they blanket in this area? Sholo, the Sholo Mills on Wales. We generally cover uh, the uh, east part of Linden to um, Pine Top. Okay. Um, and, uh, and obviously Lakeside, uh, the greater uh, Sholo area. Occasionally, uh, we try to serve White Mountain Lakes area. Wow. Um, there's some logistical issues we're dealing with there, but we hope to um, conquer those shortly. Okay. So how many volunteers do you have right now to, do, to cover all those areas? We have approximately 12, I believe, 13 now. Okay. Uh, but because many of them are seasonal, in the winter, the folks go back south again, mm-hmm. and this creates problems for us. We're always in need of driver volunteers. Okay. Um, and part of um, our advertising campaign, if you will, is always to seek out those folks that, that want to help. Right. And how do you, do you get word out to, to get information to people to know that where you where you're at the help you need so if there's people out there that want to to serve how do you get that information out to them well we we obviously try to get the radio stations to uh, promote the program and and uh, newspaper advertising okay um, we go to um, as many public events as we're able to we we had a booth at show days this year okay um, and we put on um, various seminars within the Sholo Senior Center. Okay. Um, and uh, we we pass our <laughs> brochures out as as uh, often as we can. That's a good looking brochure. Um, it has a, a a lot of information on here, and it has things where you can donate also. Absolutely. To help out. The the. We couldn't do what we do without the generosity of the public, and it's always amazing how active the community is in that regard. Uh, We survive on the individual donations that we receive. Uh, We don't enjoy huge uh, grants from uh, locations we we survive on um, a little here, a little there, right. whatnot. But yeah. uh, support from folks like Horn, uh, from uh, Arizona Public Service, from the city, the county. But the large majority of our income is individual donors. Wonderful. And so you get a little bit income from what other entities in in our state or in our federal government? How do you do you get help from them? Uh, well, we uh, contract with NACOG. Okay. North Northern Arizona Council of Governments, okay. um, and uh, so we get part of our income uh, from their support. Okay, wonderful. So, 
are you looking to expand in any way you know, or to be able to I know these people that are alone sometimes they need sometimes companionship they need somebody there to just visit with them how much time does a person have when they give that meal to them uh, right now and what is your future plans and to be able to spend a little bit more time well with these patients? presently uh, due to the number of people we have three routes okay uh, approximately 14 people on each route Wow uh, and given the the time restraints uh, we have uh, I would I would guess probably the average length of a visit may be five to ten minutes okay. um, and within that time the volunteer is is making the, the personal contact with the client but also making cursory uh, observations as to possible problems yeah or extra needs yeah. okay mm -hmm. wow so our ultimate goal is to uh, provide a, as much interaction as we reasonably can uh, given all of the, the other restraints so as we shorten the routes then they'll be able to spend a little more time with each client okay and this is so valuable. Yes. The meal we deliver obviously is important, yeah. but it's the personal interaction uh, and, and keeping the client involved with the community and uh, another human being. I agree. So I'm a, I'm a hospice chaplain. That's what I do. And I'm here with Compassion Speaks. I volunteer to do this. Um, I see when I go in with patients that that contact is so vital, so important to be able to have somebody that really truly cares. Does your, your volunteers, do they get trained on how to, to interact or to, to, to look for things that that person might need and when they're there? We do periodic training sessions to um, uh, accomplish that goal. Okay. Obviously they're not clinically trained or, right. or um, uh, as well as uh, some professions would be. Yeah. But yes, that's, that's a, a conscience effort on their part to say, gee, hi Mary, how are you today? You know, and they they genuinely care. Right. They they develop a relationship That's with the client, and the client uh, really looks forward to that visit every day. That is wonderful. You know, sometimes you can't train certain things when you're given from the heart. Usually, it comes from that individual that has empathy for that person Absolutely. and knows that that person's needs of that contact and that relationship. That's incredible. So. Um, you're, you're looking to spend more time with the clients yes. and um, it, we're going to have a break in just a little bit and we're going to talk about some other things that you may want to share with the audience that we haven't covered yet. So let's do that on the second half. So we'll, we're going to go ahead and take a break and we'll be right back with Compassion Speaks. Welcome back to Compassion Speaks. Joining us today is Steve Beersley from Sholo Mills on Wheels. And earlier we were talking about some of the things that how the program works and where the funding comes from and your location and and the, the areas that you cover. So in the future or in the near future, what are some of the events that you have going on so people can understand or be a part of Mills on Wheels? Oh. That's a good question. <laughs> um, you have something happening in September. Yeah, September December. is a National Hunger Awareness Month. Okay. So we're going to be real active getting out in the community. Uh, you should be seeing some uh, posters and flyers out okay. about town. All right. And uh, we are in the process as we speak of uh, talking with Denny's to do a fundraising event there wonderful um, in the middle of the month uh, we'll also be uh, uh, with horn uh, auto at run of the pines the end of the month cool and um, um, radio commercials, um, newspaper ads. Um, we're always, uh, of course, active at the Sholo Senior Center, which, by the way, we serve lunch there five days a week. Wow. 
So, so people can come in and go to that location that are in this area? How does that work? Yes, absolutely. We invite all the community. This is a benefit for the community okay. that the city provides. Um, the, the lunches are very economical. Mm -hmm. um, they're hearty. They're healthy. You get um, entree, salad, uh, dessert, wow. beverage for seven dollars. Wow, so is this any community member or is this person that's over 60? Any community member. So they, a family can bring their, uh, they can bring their children and husband and Absolutely. wife to together. Absolutely. That is, I didn't know about yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, it, I guess a surprise to a lot of people because the word doesn't get out en right. uh, enough. And uh, Thanksgiving, we do uh, a uh, Thanksgiving free dinner for the community. Wow. Wow. Um, at the same location? At the same location, okay. the Senior Center. Okay. And of course, there are other activities that go on there. There are uh, Marjan players, there are bridge players, there are exercise classes, and we often um, have seminars. Uh, like last year, we had the Attorney General in talking about scams that um, seniors often... Uh, They're so generous to, and they are taken advantage of yeah. on these scams. Yeah. So all things, uh, tons of information for people to, uh, to pick up on uh, various subjects. Wonderful. That's good to know. So is this happening in other locations in the White Mountains, like in Overgard and uh, Springerville and Snowflake, the same kind of thing? Yes. There's our senior center is located in Springerville, uh, uh, Overgard, uh, Snowflake, St. John's, uh, Holbrook, um, Winslow. Okay. Um, and they're doing the same activities just like you're doing here in Sholo, Lakeside, Pine Top location. Well, each senior center is uh, unique okay. and um, seeks to address the issues of that particular community. Okay. So a lot of people are that throughout the White Mountains, they, they get to view this show either on the internet or on cable. So this expands out to all those locations you just talked oh. about. So they, it's good for them all them to know all those different things so they so there's meals on wheels in all these different locations you just talked about mm -hmm. and they have senior centers there correct and do they do that same thing as you do in Sholo for five days a week a family can come in at those do you know that that's what they're doing there too I'm not sure okay. about the family situation okay because again um, they're geared toward serving the the senior population uh, and issues that are unique to that population. Right. right. Yeah. Okay. So doing this, I know volunteer work, it takes a lot of time in your life. And but it's very rewarding. You Absolutely. Know, uh, it is. It's so rewarding. And when a when a when a volunteer goes out and helps out, there's just a good feeling, especially when you go out into a home and you know that person is so grateful for you to be there and even just to be there in their presence and talk to them. It just makes you feel so good. Yes. Do you have support in your home to allow you to do these things, or you get backlash? Oh, are you going out again? You know, did, did, how is how this? How's your support that you have? Well, I have wonderful support. Uh, my wife uh, um, gives me carte blanche <laughs> to, to, to do what I believe is necessary to be done. That's and, good. And um, thankfully, she is very. Um, oriented herself towards serving. She's a member of, of the board of the White Mountain Women's Club. Wonderful. And uh, I might give them a little plug because they have been extremely supportive of our program. Uh, and uh, they started uh, making uh, gifts for for uh, various holidays for the seniors um, at Christmas they do a um, angel tree wow. for us okay and and so it's like uh, Santa Claus coming at, at Christmas time for the seniors because they get to to um, give us a list of some of the items that they may need pajamas uh, toiletries, these kinds of things, wow. and the women's club has been so very supportive and supplied those things. So when our volunteers are taking the meal, they're they're lugging the, the bags of, oh, wow. of uh, items.
items Just that uh, work in hand in hand yeah, with each other. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so White Mountain Women's Club, they're also a nonprofit, right? They are indeed. So I need to get your wife and a couple other ones to come on here and we'll, we'll talk a little bit more what they do. I'm sure they would love to do that. You, you let her know that we want to do that. I will. So, and so you have, are you a grandpa? Are you, do you, I am. Okay. I am. And how many children do you have first? Well, so, I have three children. Okay. Um, and uh, two daughters and a son. Wonderful. And uh, my youngest uh, daughter has uh, three boys, and she uh, works with the uh, San Diego County Sheriff's Department. Wonderful. And uh, my my son and my other daughter uh, live in the valley, and and um, my son is proverbial bachelor, but yeah. uh, my daughter has has uh, a daughter who uh, I'm proud to say is a graduate of Arizona State. Wonderful. And, uh, so they know what Grandpa and Dad are, Dad's doing up here in the White Mountains? Yes, they're aware? They, yes, they do. I bet yes, they're they just do. so uh, proud of you and grateful for and what a good example that you are to them. Well, to, to I serve would hope community. so. Uh, yeah. That is wonderful. So this program has been around since the 80s. Correct. Is it, do you see it, it continue to expand here and growing? And you, so when you first came on the board or first came out helping out, do you see significant change since you started to now? Yes. Okay. Uh, for a number of years, we financially struggled. Okay. And um, I don't know what the all the reasons were or were not for for that situation but uh, we have um, taken a more business approach if you will to try to solve some of our issues okay and uh, it's taken a, a team of good people to um, get this thing together to keep it rolling and expanding um, you know part of this uh, oh, uh, hunger awareness month process is looking deeply at the statistics within our local community and statistically um, there's 1500 seniors out there that may be food challenged right you know that's a that's a lot of folks yeah and uh, we have just tip, you know, hit the tip of the iceberg, and we're really um, expanding our efforts to reach everyone. That's our goal. And obviously, there's a chicken and the egg process. You need income, to, but you need clients. Right. So, right. It's it's uh, uh, not easy keeping that balance. So a person is interested in helping, if they say, I want to go help uh, with their services, or they just want to give monetary, to, they want to give some of their monies to uh, Mills on Wheels, where do they go to do this? Come to the Sholo Senior Center. Okay. Or can contact us by telephone. And now, being a senior myself, you have to forgive me. I don't always, you know, remember things. Five five three two zero oh, six five six. Is it on this brochure here? I'd have the to number. Yeah. Let's see here. Nine two eight five three two. 0656. Okay. The Sholo Senior Center. Yep, it's right here. Right here on the bottom of this yep. pamphlet. Okay. So you Wonderful. Can contact us by phone or please come in. Take a look at the Senior Center and, and uh, uh, see what the city has provided for, for the citizens. Okay. Um, and uh, obviously, again, we need volunteers and uh, we need support financially. So when a person is at home, they're viewing this, and they know that, okay, maybe my grandfather, my grandmother, or my parents might qualify for this, some of the things that they need to be aware of what qualifies them is mostly if they're at home by themselves mm -hmm. and can't really get out and go somewhere. If somebody's living with them, periodically, not always, just checking on them and stuff, do they still qualify? Uh, potentially, okay. they, they, they could. Okay. And again, um, there are so many individual situations um, that people find themselves in. Oftentimes, um, one loses a spouse 
and and perhaps it, it's the the wife that uh, always provided the meals and the husband doesn't cook yeah you know? so I had that situation going on with one of my uh, with my patients right now is if something happens to her and she cooks when something happens to her, he doesn't know how to cook. And this is a good opportunity for him to get a good, nice meal until he starts learning how to do things. Absolutely. Because she's always take, taking care of, bless his heart, he's been taken care of by his sweet wife this whole time. Well, that happens to a lot of us. <laughs> it does. Yeah. Yeah. But those, those situations come with life. Yeah, it and, does. And again, we don't have any hard, fast rules. We want to, to look at the need that the individual has. And I might add, we refer to our clients as clients. They're not patients, they're not um, someone that, that you want to take pity on. Right. They're a human being yeah. and we treat them with dignity. Wonderful. Because that's what they deserve. Yep. Yeah, and we all feel that way. Even if the driver wants to feel that way, what they're going out and do, we all want to be treated and noticed and, and appreciated. We all do. Absolutely. Steve, it's been wonderful having here, you here today. And um, so people that want to get out there and go serve and help, Senior Center in Sholo, and there's all these other locations throughout the White Mountains they can go to. And a lot of them That's are right. at the Senior Centers, correct? That's correct. Okay. Yes. Well, thank you so very much. You bet. It was having it's good having you here. Uh, sp spread the word, please. We will do that. And this is going to be a big help for, to spread the word of people uh, viewing. So it's been great to have uh, Steve Beersley today on Compassion Speaks, and we will see you again. So go out and surf in the White Mountains whenever you get a chance. Thank you. Thank you.